Hello. Welcome to episode 21 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And this week on our cookbook challenge, the 2022 cookbook challenge, we're going to talk about the recipe that I made last week for the cookbook challenge. Yes. And that was? (laughs) I was trying to build some suspense. (laughs) The recipe was... A masala chickpea curry. Yes. And this was coming from the Minimalist Bakers yes, the minim- Everyday Cooking. Yeah. Minimalist Bakers Everyday Cooking, 101, entirely plant-based, mostly gluten-free, easy and delicious recipes by Dana Schultz. Yeah. So a very, you know, a lengthy but also very accurate title. Yeah, this is a great cookbook. It's a fantastic cookbook. There's I've a, used it for a number of things uh, already. There are and... so many pages bookmarked in this book cookbook. It's like it's true. every other page has a, I don't know why we, I know at one point Sam went through with a thing of post-it notes that she cut into little strips. I did. And like marked all of our cookbooks with recipes that she wanted to try. This is true. This particular cookbook, every other page practically honestly, has one of those sticky notes in it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, And I have to say, of the recipes that we have tried in the 2022 cookbook challenge, uh, so far, this masala chickpea curry is the winner. Yeah, well, um, you know, I wanted to start slowly and build. I'm starting slowly and building. Oh, sorry. Um, No, I mean, no, no, no apologies necessary. I'm just saying I wanted to start simple, simply. With the recipes, you mean? With the recipes, also based on the ingredients that we had in the house. Right. And so when when I was looking through the books and I read this recipe, I'm like, ooh, this is something we can make. We have just about everything on hand. Fun part was making my own garam masala. That's super cool. Yes. Now, garam masala is a spice blend, and it can vary from region to region to region in India. As far as what's in it. So I just made, the funny thing is I'm like, oh, I have a garam masala with like a pre-mixed garam masala, but I want to make my own garam masala. So I started like pulling out spices, uh, roasted some spices and started to make my garam masala. I flipped the page on this recipe and they actually give you um, an easy homemade garam masala recipe after I had already roasted and ground. But mine was pretty close to what they recommended. And it was really, really good. Yeah, it turned out really good. Yeah, it was fantastic. I liked this recipe a lot. Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, Now, granted, I might be a little bit biased because Indian is probably my favorite cuisine on the planet. Yeah. Um, There are very few things I enjoy more than a really amazing curry. So, you know, I, I might just have, you know, some special affections towards this type of food. Yeah. But... It really was a beautiful curry. It was it was thick and rich and earthy. Um, I was surprised about the texture you got without ghee. Yeah, um, no ghee. There is coconut milk, and this recipe called for light coconut milk, canned coconut milk, mm-hmm. not not like coconut milk that you drink, right? Um, but I never buy light coconut milk because what I like about coconut milk is that it adds like a richness and a thickness to things like soups mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I used regular coconut milk. So that was the one deviation I made from the recipe. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was just beautiful. Spices were fantastic. Chickpeas were lovely. Love me some, some good rice. I mean, it was, it was just fantastic. It was comfort food. Yeah. Perfect comfort food. I enjoyed it. On a very cold winter day. Yeah, it was really good and warming. And Mm -hmm. um, what else can I say about this recipe? It gave me an opportunity to use um, the Vitamix. If you don't have a Vitamix, I'm sorry. I know they're really expensive. I was lucky. I got gifted my Vitamix. Yes, you did. By my my in-laws. Oh, my God. And I think I cried when I opened the Vitamix. You did. (laughs) You did. They gave me a Vitamix for Christmas, I think, two years ago. Sounds right. And... Yeah, it's kind of a game game changer, mainly because you can put um, the one thing that's cool about the Vitamix is you can put hot things in it. Mm -hmm. So when you're making curries and things like this, when you're cooking down the vegetables and stuff and then you need to blend them, you don't have to wait for them to cool off. You can just pop them in the Vitamix with, you know, no worries of explosions. Yeah. So anything that gives me an opportunity to use the Vitamix kind of makes me a little giddy. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's amazing that you don't make hummus every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so that was our recipe of the week in our cookbook challenge. Um, if you don't have that cookbook, I highly recommend it. Um, get out get out there and grab you one. Yeah, it really is an outstanding cookbook. I mean, it's right up there with Veganomicon for me as yeah. a, a must-have vegan cookbook like this should be a cornerstone of your cookbook library yeah it's a great cookbook and the minimalist baker on their website they also offer many recipes for free yes and actually their website is where we found my favorite recipe for vegan cinnamon rolls so oh, that's right yeah 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 and that's a beautiful recipe yeah they're tried and true. They, they test are. they test their recipes thoroughly before they publish them or put them in a book or anything. So yep. you can, you know, you can have confidence that they're gonna turn out. That's right. When you make them. So Absolutely. All hail the minimalist baker. Yay. Yes. I'll hail them. Do you want to talk um a little bit about how the recording process on your latest audiobook is going? Oh, the latest audiobook. Well, we announced last week that um Confessions of an Animal Rights Terrorist by Karen Levinson is now available on Audible and Amazon. So go get yourself a copy if you're feeling so inclined. Yeah, um, highly my, recommend. My next audiobook, which will be coming out, um, I'm thinking in the next couple of weeks, it's still in the recording process. As I was editing today, I found a couple of glitches that I need to go back and do a couple of retakes. Uh, just little sections. I don't think I should have to do whole chapters, but a few things that I needed to fix just didn't sound quite right. So we're, it's going steadily. It's going a little bit slowly because I am now back to work full time and I don't have the hours in the day to dedicate to it like I did um, in the fall. So uh, it is coming along and I'm anticipating that it will be out there and available um, in the next couple of weeks. And that book again is called Peace to All Beings, subtitled uh, Veggie Soup for the Chicken's Soul. And it really kind of deals with the more spiritual aspects of veganism from many perspectives. This is not a faith-specific book. It uh, honors Western and Eastern traditions. It draws from many, many sages and philosophers. And it's it's just quite wonderful. I'm really enjoying working on this book. So I highly recommend. Yeah, and... Um... I don't know. I've never, when I, like I've listened to audiobooks as audiobooks are actually my favorite way to, to read a book because I fall asleep when I read, mm -hmm. but you don't realize, you don't think about the amount of hours of work that it takes for a narrator to create an audiobook. Yeah, it it's quite a project. So let's say a book that you're working on is supposed to be about nine and a half hours long. And I've had several books that have been in that range. Um, they usually end up being longer. I think it's because the system that estimates the length, it's based solely on word count. Yeah, it's a computer figuring out. Yeah, it's right? got to be, a, so, it's gotta be a, a computer algorithm of yeah. some kind that figures out how long it should take you to speak that number of words. Yeah, it doesn't take into account um, pauses that need to be there mm -hmm. and... And stuff like that, right? Right. It also doesn't take into consideration um, how text heavy the book is. So, for example, you could have tons and tons and tons of words, but it's in bullet points. Yeah, there could be a lot of lists. Uh, I've had a couple of books like that with lots of lists. Um, there could also be a same, um, same number of words, but just incredibly text heavy paragraphs. Um, but anyway, so it will take not just the estimated time of recording the book, but it will take maybe that time plus half again, um, just because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have to do some retakes. Um, you know, things happen and things don't come out perfectly all the time. Like your wife walks into the room to reset the Wi-Fi. <laughs> like my wife walks into the room to reset the Wi-Fi. This is true. This is true. This did happen. 
Yeah. Yeah. You don't want that to make it into the book. No, it didn't. I cut that out. That's already gone. No worries. Uh, excuse me. Pardon me. I just need to reboot the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Nope. That's already gone. So that will not that will not make it to the final audio. Um, but then once you're done recording, the real work comes in. The, the real work is, is not recording. The real work is editing. Yeah. And um, I average about an hour for every 15 minutes of raw audio. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. It's a lot of work. It, that's intense. If you consider we do these podcasts, um, they're usually like maybe an hour of raw audio and it takes me like an hour to edit, edit it. Right. So, well, the difference is when you're talking about an audio book is that you need to get rid of anything that doesn't belong. Yeah. Audible breaths. And audible stuff like breaths. That. You know, if somehow my elbow hit the edge of the table right. and you get like a little thud in the background, you need to get rid of that. So it's yeah. much more specific than editing a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We're a little more forgiving here in the podcast world. Oh, absolutely. World. <laughs> totally forgiving. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I never heard anybody say, I heard you bump your microphone, in, you know. In, no, I've never heard that at either. 35 minutes and six seconds. <laughs> nope. Never heard that either. <laughs> yeah. So... So on average, uh, a, a nine and a half hour book is going to take, I don't know, about 15 hours of recording and then another 40 hours of editing. Yeah, it's intense. Yeah. But I love it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And when it's a book that I really believe in and that I really connect to, yeah, the time is time very, very well spent. Yeah. I think it's really cool that you've been able to um, get some titles that are things that you're passionate about mm -hmm. you know oh absolutely yeah absolutely yep i've been very lucky yeah all right moving on let's talk about some um fun things in the news well i have one fun thing that was in the news is this the ikea thing <laughs> this is the ikea thing okay so ikea was uh seeking out people for their um innovation and technology departments and every applicant was served 3D printed vegan Swedish meatballs. <laughs> Only Ikea, right? Only I'm surprised the they didn't actually make them 3D print them themselves because that right. would be more Ikea. Here's an Allen wrench and a 3D printer. Make yourself a meatball. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> I have to admit this was a little bit of a head scratcher for me. <laughs> um, not Not because I don't think it's cool. I do think it's cool. And I love the idea that Ikea is adding something so out of the box to their interview process yeah. in looking for people who are uh, creative problem solvers. I right. think that's awesome. But my question is, why would you take the time and expense to 3D print a vegan meatball? <laughs> why would you not just pick up just whatever material you are the making meatball. the meatball out of? <laughs> Yeah. And ball it up in your hands as you would a traditional right. animal based right. meatball. No, it it's it obviously it's a gimmick. Sure. Right. I mean absolutely, but I just don't understand like very literally, I don't understand the why. Yeah. Behind the three D printer, I mean, I've I've seen a three D printer at work, and yeah. for the most part, they don't work quickly. I, you know, I don't know. I don't really know enough about the technology to know how quickly, but you would think that a human hand could make a meatball quicker than a 3D printer. Yes, I'm thinking that is probably the case. Right. So I think it really is just kind of a gimmick to um, maybe just uh, lower the defenses of the people. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> and that, that, certainly, that certainly would work. I mean, I know I'd be caught off guard a little bit yeah. if you offered me 3D printed Swedish meatballs, like, <laughs> be like, okay, first off, yum. And second right. off, but yeah, I, I, maybe just to see the applicant's reactions to said 3D printed meatball. Like, be. if they would, you know, like, okay, this meatball is good. Okay, that's great. But tell me what about this meatball is good. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, what about the technology that we use to make this meatball? Right. Makes you want to work for Ikea. <laughs> right. right. And I also want to know who decided what material would be going into the 3D printer to create the vegan yeah, meatball. Like, I couldn't what really, is it made out of? I really couldn't find 
uh any like an ingredients list or anything i'm guessing it you know it's some i'm tvp or whatever they make their because they already make a, oh, yes. a vegan version of their swedish meatballs and so i don't i couldn't really find they didn't say in any article that i read what the ingredients of these 3d printed meatballs right. were um but i think it really is just to kind of um, drive home the point that Ikea really is like they want 80% of the food products sold in their stores packaged and everything to be uh, plant-based yeah. by, by like 2023 or something like that. Go Ikea. So uh, I think they're really just trying to drive home. Look, this is the direction that we're going. And because we're Ikea, we're going to make it complicated. <laughs> Right. Here, here is your um, meatball making substance. Here is a 45 page book that tells you how to make said meatball. <laughs> and here's a 3D printer. Get yourself some meatballs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just raises so many questions for me. And just the entertaining type of question like who decided what the ingredient list was who decided those ingredients would go well into a 3d printer right. like i'm wondering what the state of the 3d printer was after making these yeah. meatballs yeah i don't really i don't i haven't read up enough on the technology to know about the 3d printed food thing but mm -hmm. i know they are already making like 3d printed lab meat and stuff like that like 3d printed steaks and stuff like that yeah. the lab grown meat um I'm not really, I guess I just, I don't have enough knowledge to, to speak too much on that. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. So you're a step ahead of me there. But I think it's fun. And for those listening, yes, that is a cat in the background. Oh, it's Chirpy. Chirpy wants to be on the podcast. Chirpy does want to be on the podcast. Yes. How you doing, Chirps? How's it going? Hmm? That's Chirpy. Yes. He's, he's trying to knock over my microphone. Yes, actually. he is. Okay, next up on our agenda, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, this kind of goes back to our cookbook challenge thing. Um, and for people that are maybe stuck in ruts or trying to learn how to cook vegan, I wanted to talk about a couple of people uh, that I know that are offering virtual vegan cooking classes. This is such a great idea. Yeah, I mean, with this new virtual world that we're living in because of COVID, now everything is virtual. Yeah. Right? There are a number of people out there offering virtual cooking classes, but I wanted to shout out a couple of people that are definitely uh, working it and working hard and definitely benefiting their communities and doing good things for their communities and offering these virtual vegan cooking classes. So um, the first person on my list is Fraser Fitzgerald, who is the owner of what used to be the Planted Fork in the Hamilton Market in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, it's now called No Bones. They're doing they're in the middle of a rebranding, and he offers uh, online cooking classes. Actually, the the day that our episode comes out will be the day of his uh, most recent online cooking class, where he's teaching you how to make burrito tacos. And a uh, hot, a pineapple hot sauce. Mm, that sounds good. Yeah, where he like teaches you how to like pickle the peppers and like make everything to make your own hot sauce. You can't get in on that class because it, at, the, at the time this episode comes out, it'll be too late for you to sign up. But he'll have other classes in the future. If you go to his website, it's uh, Fraser Cooks. It's F R A S E R Cooks dot org. You can uh, look at his all the classes that he, he has, and you can sign up for a class there. He also has this really cool thing that he just let me know about where he does this, where he will come up with like a three-course meal with you, and you can cook it. it. And this is like live, like a Zoom cooking class. And he said it would be like a really cool date night. You and him come up with this menu – so you're going on a date with Fraser? No, <laughs> the date's not with Fraser. I mean, more power to you if <laughs> No, I think his girlfriend might have a problem with that. Probably. Um no, so you and Fraser will talk about like what you want to like just an idea of what you want to cook on this night or whatever. And then he will help you come up with like a three course meal. And then like that night, you'll have Fraser on your laptop or whatever 
cooking, teaching you how to cook the meal. That sounds pretty awesome. Can it, we do that? Yeah. Wouldn't that be really fun? I would love to do that. So you can book him for just like book him for the night. I love it. Cooking with Frazier. That would be fun. Bring it on. Yeah, we might have to try that. I think we have to. Just so we can tell you what it's what it's like. Absolutely. That just sounds like way too much fun. Yeah. So that's one thing that he can do for you. And like I said, he has these other like scheduled classes that you'll have to check out on his website. Another person I wanted to talk about um, was Nicole Boyd, who runs, she's in Buffalo. She's from New York City, uh, from like Brooklyn, I think, and uh, is in Buffalo right now. But she also, she runs a, a bakery, Studio Baker, yep. and she bakes and ships her baked goods all over the country. But she also offers cooking classes, vegan baking classes, vegan cooking classes. Um, they're specific to like cookies or cakes or cupcakes or whatever. And she has some on her website that are like pre-recorded classes oh, that you can cool. buy. And she right now, I think she's she has like a deal. They're like almost half off. Wow. Where you can go and like learn how to cook uh, vegan, learn how to bake rather vegan cookies and vegan cakes and vegan cupcakes. And she also does, uh, what else does she do? She does, oh, she's a personal chef. Mm -hmm. So she does that. She does meal planning. Oh, when you sign up for her class, um, she will email you, provide you with a PDF, uh, all the things that, that are required for the class. So like ingredients. Yeah, she'll yeah, she'll email you like a PDF list of all the ingredients and everything that you'll need like utensils and sure. yeah. all all the kitchen utensils and stuff that you'll need in order to make said items in the class. Oh, so she has classes on cinnamon rolls, cupcakes and cakes, cookies. Oh, or you can sign up for live classes that she puts out and she does her live class every Wednesday and Thursday. So follow her on her social media. Or you can uh, look her up online. She does have a website. It's uh, studiovegans with an S dot com. And all the information is on her website. You can also, I think, buy her baked goods at that website. And nice. she ships them all over the country. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to check out the um, cupcake and cake baking class for yeah. sure. Yeah, I'd like to check them out too. That's really yeah. cool. So we'll have to check out those and have Frasier make a three course meal with us. Oh my night. gosh, please. <laughs> I think that, that would, be would so just fun. be so much fun. Wouldn't it? That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would just be fantastic. So yeah, check check these people out and like look in your local area because there's a lot of people out there doing this kind of thing. And I know a lot of them really could use support. Absolutely. During COVID and all this. Um Bakers and restaurant runners are having a hard time right and now. And so they've been getting super creative, yeah. uh, finding ways to kind of make it through these really difficult financial times. Yeah. So if you can afford to throw a little money somebody's way that's doing something like this, please do. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yep. Instead of like going, like instead of going to a chain restaurant or whatever, seek out, a, you know, a, an independent, a, an independent chef or restaurant owner or on look online to see if they have products that that they're sending out you know shipping out through the mail or if they're doing things like this virtual cooking class kind of thing absolutely yeah because every little bit helps sure does for people out there that are struggling because of covid absolutely yeah so i just wanted to share a little bit of that and um i think i'll probably investigate a little bit more about people oh yeah in that vein We're i would we're going to have to report back on this for sure. Yeah. Because I definitely want to send some traffic those people's way. Absolutely. Okay. I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping now. I was going to say, do you want to do the <laughs> housekeeping and wrap up kind of thing? That yeah. You um, tend to do? Email us any recipes that you would like us to try or that you love. Um, at Wait a minute. What? I've got something that I wanted to talk about. Oh, okay. Okay. This is going back to the cookbook challenge for a moment. And um, I just wanted to make sure to acknowledge um, Christine's home cooking Sans recipe as well. So today, for example, she made us an absolutely beautiful sweet potato and cauliflower chili and fresh cornbread. And it was gorgeous. So oh, wait, thank you. You're very, very welcome. So no recipe, just 
doing her thing. I usually just wing it. She wings it. And she comes up with some really, really beautiful stuff. Maybe one of these days we'll we'll get her to put out a Compassion and Cucumbers cookbook. Oh, yeah. Maybe we could do like a Compassion and Cucumbers like ebook or something like that. If you want to do that, I, we can I do really, that. It's not something I have any desire to do, but it would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have no desire to do this, but it would be fun. <laughs> well, it would just mean it would just slow my cooking process down because I'd have to be like, OK, wait a minute. How much of this did I put in and how much of that did I put yes, in? Yes, absolutely. And that's what creating recipes is all about. It's a I lot know. of work. I know. And a so lot of work. You would you would be doing the cooking and I would be sitting there taking notes. Writing it down. Yes. Wait a minute. How much of that did you put in? Mm-hmm. I don't know. A schmidge. Yeah. But I just want to say that Christine does an amazing job of um, providing us with really fantastic meals and usually they don't come from a recipe so no she's kind of got it going on where the cooking is concerned uh, thank you you're welcome well i was i was taught by um my mother was a great cook yes she was and she never used recipes no she didn't so i i learned from good people yeah you did yeah so um anyway back to the housekeeping right <laughs> yeah sorry i i distracted you no, from the fine. housekeeping if you ever want to distract me to you know compliment me on that i'm, I'm all down for that eh, figures so yeah email us any recipes that you think that we should try or recipes that you want us to try and haven't tried yourself anything cookbooks that you think we need to buy um at compassion and cucumbers at gmail.com we're still doing our uh fundraiser for Mockingbird Farms Animal Sanctuary. And thank you, everybody, so much for that has donated. And that's at buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers. And we're and still looking for that first $50 donor. Yeah, what, what does that first $50 donor get? That first $50 donor gets a limited edition Compassion and Cucumbers t-shirt and also a free copy of the audiobook of uh, Confessions of an Animal Rights Terrorist by Karen Levinson. Yeah, so the first $50 dona- donation gets that. That's right. So get on it, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other housekeeping? Do we have any other housekeeping? So thank you so much, everybody, for listening. I hope that you're making it through this winter okay. If you're in our part of the country, it's been a little brutal the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Lots and lots of snow. Really cold. Lots of cold. Lots of shoveling. Lots of car cleaning. Um, so stay warm. Make yourself a cup of cocoa Mm -hmm. and we'll catch you next week. That we will. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye. If you'd like to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers and buy us a cup of coffee. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting us in what we're doing. We're really having a good time with it.